The key content of today is to identify, discuss and define the current challenges in professional discussions about active housing. What do you identify as the main challenges under this umbrella called active housing that we face today? I think the difficulty we face is to make the concept available to the buying public, to the consumer, so that people understand that there are tremendous opportunities for a more supportive, a more enjoyable uh, way of life that is at the same time much more sustainable. What do you believe are the best answers to these challenges and why? Some of the uh, answers, in my view, are to do with awareness and communication. I think it's, uh, we have a long way to go in uh, making the public aware of the opportunities that exist for them. Um, they're genuinely there. Um, they can be uh, made available to people, uh, but what's on offer at the moment falls very far short. And so um, uh, things always work well and quickly and change is possible, um, but the key driver needs to be more awareness um, from the public standpoint. The technologies are already there, so that's not a difficulty. Um, uh, we can do all sorts of things uh, now quite readily um, and at reasonable additional expense that we couldn't do even five or um, uh, ten years ago. So then the other um, main element of all of this is the ability of the industry to, to rise to the challenge. Um, and that's a question of uh, organising uh, ourselves in a supply chain that really works effectively uh, to deliver this quite complex, holistic proposition. The point is that these attractive aspects of um, a new livable environment, a more energy efficient and more sustainable um, environment, uh, can be made available to people in such a way that people will call for them, expect them, wish to pay more for them. Um, and if we succeed in doing that, if we su succeed in making the market respond uh, by making these things more desirable, uh, the market will work with us rather than against us in achieving the, the global ambition of um, reducing CO2 and, and uh, dealing with the rising water. The energy challenge concerns the fact that buildings consume approximately 40% of all produced energy. To address climate change and reduce the global energy consumption, it is crucial to consider using renewable energy sources as part of the solution, also in terms of securing energy supply. How do you foresee that we best can confront the energy challenge in buildings in the future? The big question which I can't answer, which is, is in the dynamic between um, huge economies of scale, so that massive wind farms or, uh, or tidal barrages which require huge investment. Um, I don't know, maybe those kinds of solutions will produce the uh, economies that will simply deliver um, cheap energy, cheap renewable energy. Or maybe it's about local supply. Um, from my point of view, um, I think the latter is quite interesting because um, if local people have a stake in local energy generation, um, all sorts of issues that affect, um, or rather uh, all sorts of issues that make it quite difficult to deliver the macro solutions, resistance to a tidal barrage. I think a return to something with which I think uh, the developing uh, European society was quite familiar in, in even in medieval or um, uh, you know in the 17th, 18th, and 19th century, which is a kind of parish level um, of organisation, is an interesting uh, uh, way forward, and I think will reconnect us socially as as neighbours with one another. The living factor challenge concerns the fact that we spend 90% of our time indoors but less than 30% of the building mass contributes to or provides a healthy indoor climate. As humans, we need fresh air and daylight when we are indoors. It has a positive effect on our health and well-being as well as on our ability to learn. How do you foresee that we can confront the living factor challenge in buildings in the future? Family life is diverse and complicated. And when I hear the words livability. I don't think about buildings, I don't think about energy systems, I don't think about materials. I think about um, family life and the way in which uh, an environment, actually including outside the building, in, including in the neighbourhood, enables um, family life 
to uh, make people have, uh, enables people to have successful lives in, in a family context. Now, that's really complicated. Um, and in many ways, I think the answer to it, again, is, is to see the built environment as a, an enabling framework uh, for people and actually critically not to be uh, dogmatic um, about it. Uh, I think one of the, the biggest threats, in a way, is, is regulation. I think people are obviously quite correctly concerned about reducing energy consumption, and this is giving rise to dogmatic approaches and complex regulation. And the danger is that the uh, response to that will be um, keep it simple, um, make the windows small, keep them shut, and uh, recirculate the air. And the trouble with all of that um, is that it confines people in an extremely unhealthy way. For society to, and to, to develop and grow, for children to flourish, you have to have a very flexible, open, um, uh, uh, and supportive um, built environment um, at the domestic and at the neighbourhood level. What is active housing in your definition and how do you believe it is relevant to the work that you and your organisation carries out? My personal definition to hazard one uh, would be all about uh, enabling, uh, uh, supporting successful family life um, that allows uh, people, particularly children, to flourish um, healthily and safely. Um, and uh, I think, uh, I mean, an extremely worthwhile endeavour to try to explore um, how that can happen. I think it's partly about um, building design, it's partly about neighbourhood design, and it's very much about um, the arrangements by means of which those are managed and the relationship between the occupants and their environment, whether they have control over it, um, whether it responds to their needs.